catalyst will be needed as reactant, so you'll put it in as reactant, and then uh, the catalyst will be used in the mechanism, and then at the end, it'll be produced as a product. So you have it in there as a reactant, but then it's produced as a product, so it would cancel out of the overall reaction as well. So uh, it's the opposite of an intermediate. They're the same in that they both get canceled out. They're different in that an intermediate is produced. You didn't mean to make it, but it just got made and then used up. A catalyst, you meant to put it in, but then you get the whole amount back at the beginning. So, um, yeah, there will be uh, problems like that, too, and that's how you recognize them. They do usually affect the mechanism. They'll add more steps often, but since the activation energy is lower, uh, it does make the reaction go faster. You know how activation energy is a power on E, it's E to the negative EA. Uh, so that means just a small decrease in the activation energy might make the reaction go a lot faster. We're going to see that with an example. Let's take a look at that. I know that's an awful lot of words. I don't want you to copy the problem down. Just write number 92 on this. And let's take a look at this problem. The activation energy of an uncatalyzed biochemical reaction is 50 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so we don't really know, we don't have a frame of reference to know if that's a high activation energy or low activation energy, because we don't know the value set. So we'll just go with it. Okay, fine, 50. In the presence of a catalyst at 37 degrees C, by the way, 37 degrees is body temperature. Our body is 98.6 Fahrenheit, but it's 37 degrees Celsius. That's why it's biochemical, that's why that's significant. All right, so the rate constant for the reaction increases by a factor of 2,500. So this catalyst we add caused the reaction to go 2,500 times faster. That's pretty substantial as compared with the uncatalyzed reaction. Assuming the frequency factor is the same for both catalyzed and uncatalyzed, calculate the activation energy when it's catalyzed. You think the activation energy when it's catalyzed is going to be higher or lower? Lower. Lower, right. That's what a catalyst does. It lowers the activation energy. And therefore, the reaction goes faster. How are we going to solve this? We just derived that natural log of K1 over K2 equals EA over R. That's for when you have two different temperatures. I don't have two different temperatures. It's the same temperature. Yes. We have this. What would that do for us? Could we, let's see, we know the, we don't know K, do we? We know a, a comparison of Ks. So how about we take a ratio? How about we say this? Um, I'm going to just erase this for a second, come over here and say, K when the reaction was catalyzed equals EAA to the negative EA over RT when it's catalyzed. And K, when it's uncatalyzed, would equal this expression, uncatalyzed. Now, we know that K catalyzed over K uncatalyzed is 2,500. 2,500 times faster when it's catalyzed than uncatalyzed. So that ratio is that. So that's equal to A times E to the negative EA over RT catalyzed over A times E to the negative VA over RT uncatalyzed. And stuff cancels. Yeah. So we don't really need to know what those Ks were. We just know the ratio between them. And it said, it even tells you, doesn't it tell you? Assume the frequency factor is the same for both. Oh, good. I do that. So this is, this is OK. We even know some of these values over here. We know the temperature in both cases. We know the R. R is a constant. And we know one of the E's, the energy. Uh, it was 50 when it was uncatalyzed. So that number right there is 50. So the only thing we don't know is this thing right here. Can you solve for it? We can't. We can't solve for it. Uh, you want to try it on your own? Go ahead. I'll give you a moment. See if you can do the math on this. What do you, when you have e to a power divided by e to a power, 
what do you do? Keep the E, subtract the exponents. Yes? Okay, so go ahead. Watch out for those negative signs, they'll get you. Did, did you need that out there? Yeah, just the couple things. What would you do next after this? I guess there's two choices. Number one, you can put the numbers in that you know and leave the thing that you don't know hanging. What else could you do at this point? Take the ln of both sides. I don't want to mess with these things up in the exponent. My unknown is an exponent on e. Get them out of the exponent. So you take the natural log of both sides. You okay with that? All right, so uh, ln of 2,500 equals ln of all that So that means that uh, the left side is just ln of 2,500, that's a constant value. On the right side, it's just natural log of E is just one, so all that comes down. And now, is it okay with you? That's minus a negative again. So I'm going to turn this one around, and it's going to be the activation energy of the uncatalyzed reaction was 50 kilojoules. Oh, 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 oh! Before we do that, do you recognize that the denominator is the same? Is the uh, temperature was the same and R is the same? So really, we have just that E A minus that E A over R T. You with me? Yeah? Then multiply out the RT. Yeah? So it looks like this. Uh, this side is ln of 2,500. Over here is uh, that EA. Remember, that's minus negative. So I'm going to bring that out to the front. And that was 50 minus EA over RT. Now, that was in kilojoules. So don't use 8.31. Use 0 0.00831. You catch that? And then the temperature was 37 degrees Celsius, which is 310 Kelvin. Now we're cranking this thing out that times those two and solving for the EA. And what do you get at the end? I'm thinking this side over here, when you take 11 and 2500, multiply that, multiply that, you're going to get about 20 for an answer. So 50 minus x equals 20. How do you know? I know what the answer is at the end. <laughs> I can't. I don't do that math. <laughs> All right, get an answer. What do you have? Antonio. Why is 50 positive? Oh, because I took this and turned it around. Uh, because that was minus negative. 
And that was the uncatalyzed part. So the uncatalyzed reaction was 50 right there. Certain uncatalyzed reaction is 50. So that was what I plugged in for that one. But I had turned this around. I took that number minus that number. Because this winds up being positive, and that's negative. You with me on that? Anybody else? Am I, uh, is anybody else wandering here lost? You can say if you are. If I lost you, where? Peter? About 9.30. <laughs> you see how I took a ratio of these two? Because the problem gave us what the ratio was. It was 2,500 times faster there than there. Uh, and so I just put those two over each other. And from here, we're just doing the math. Now, did you get caught up in the math? Um, this equation up here, k equals a times, or yeah, times e to that, this is used quite a bit um, at the end when we're looking at the way a catalyst works, um, finding k at different temperatures. So yeah, you're going to want to go back and look that over. So do we get an answer of 30 for the activation energy? Uh, yeah. If you call that point zero one. No, no, like it's doable. I guess. L and two is like point six nine. All right, we don't have time for it. Um, so yeah, maybe after class you can tell me that. <laughs> I want to just mention, for a moment, give you a, a sense of what a catalyst does and why it's important. When it was not catalyzed. It was just running on its own. Uh, and the activation energy was 50. We did the math, and we found the catalyst is going to take the activation energy and go from 50 down to 30. Now, that's not even half as small, or it's not even half of what it was before. So you would think, oh, if you're not even cutting the activation energy by half, then maybe it'll speed up the reaction, but not by much, maybe by twice as much. You see how much the reaction, how much faster it went with the catalyst? Just going from 50 down to 30 on your activation energy caused the reaction to go 2,500 times faster. So this is not a linear relationship. This is an exponential relationship, and it's pretty significant, yeah. Yeah, assuming at the same temperature. Uh, K would be affected by the T, so yeah, if, if we had different temperatures, it would change it even more. Yep. There was another example I was hoping to do, but we don't have time. We've got to talk about this lab. The lab that we do on Monday, we're going to find a differential rate law. The bleach lab, we found the integrated rate law. We need to find a differential rate law as well. You remember how we find a differential rate law? We run several trials in the same experiment. We make up a data table. The data table has several trials on it. Hopefully, in two trials, we're keeping one reactant constant and the other reactant is changing and we see how changing the concentration affects the rate. You with me? Find the order of the reaction with respect to both reactants. There's two reactants in this case, iodide ion. And this thing, this is interesting, S2O8 with a negative 2, polyatomic ion. It's called peroxy disulfate. What it is, is uh, it's a sulfate connected to another sulfate. That right there is the peroxy part. Like peroxide is two oxygens bonded to each other. Um, anytime you have two things with oxygen being the connection, we call it peroxy something. So it's peroxy disulfate. These two react in a redox reaction. The iodide ion will oxidize to iodine. Now, we're going to have a little bit of starch in our mixture. And you know from bio, that uh, if you put starch into, uh, um, sorry, if you put iodine into starch, it turns blue. You get a blue color. So uh, that's what happens in this reaction. Now, uh, I don't see yet how this applies to kinetics. Here's how it applies to kinetics. We're going to have more in the container than just that and that. We're going to add a third chemical, not to react with these, but actually the third chemical we call the clock. 
It's actually thiosulfate ions. So